et... Hey there, Alex again. So I've been working on CAD this week because I'm trying to quickly redesign a project that I started a year ago, but I want to finally get finished and make a video series about it. Um, regardless, if anybody's worked on CAD, you know it's very easy for time to get away from you. I realize that it's Thursday and I haven't gotten a video out, and I'm actually waiting for parts for something that I have pending. So instead, I thought I would just kind of brainstorm a list of wacky things or maybe common sense things that I've seen or rather haven't seen in the 3D printing world. This is the talking about like uh, FDM, you know, FFF fused filament deposition type printing, uh, but that I would like to see or know the feasibility of or see if anybody's worked on it or anything like that and i didn't poke a whole lot into all these areas all i did was i put on an episode of hill's kitchen and i just brainstormed a whole bunch of ideas so some of these will be common sense some of them will be wacky and not possible to do or a stupid idea and others may have already been done in some way shape or form but in case they aren't i'm going to put them out in the public domain so then crap weasels can't patent them and I'm going to be reading off of my computer monitor. So pardon me if I keep looking down, but here we go. Let's start with some like sensors that I would like to have built into uh, printers or in be able to interact with the firmware in some way. And I, I know you could probably hack this in, but some of these seem common sense, like a smoke detector. Now you can get like little smoke detector modules, like pretty cheap, like little Arduino smoke detectors. It'd be really nice to be able to hook that up to the uh, kill switch on a printer pretty easily so that if something goes up in flames kills the power another thing um, current sensors like for high current things like the bed a lot of times what's causing these people to have fires is the like underrated connectors for the amount of current that they're pushing through for their heated beds and that's you know melting them or the wiring is bursting into flame or something like that but it would be nice to be able to have a visual representation of that. I know it's easy to tie in, but again, it will be nice to be able to tie overcurrent into the firmware. Just in a real easy, like, uncomment and option kind of way. Not in like a kludgy hack your own thing in there kind of way. Like a baseline safety feature. And then other things that I've thought would be useful would be, I don't know if it's possible, like an extruded filament temperature sensor. I know that's a little wacky, that's kind of a fringe thing, so maybe not, but it's just something that popped into my head because we know that the amount of thermal energy that goes into the filament doesn't always end up in a filament, especially if you're using a large diameter nozzle and printing very quickly. So if there were an extruded temp sensor, then that would make the PID loop a little bit better for tuning the temperature of the filament as opposed to the temperature of the hot end or the heat block. And then I guess I should have tied this in with like the safety stuff, but just like a simple little, you know, accelerometer tied up to a kill switch. I, maybe that's not feasible, but if something like stopped moving because it jammed or the belt broke or something like that, it'd be nice not to have all of the filament cake all over everything, but it'd be a huge spaghetti mess or catch fire or whatever. Anyway, enough of the sensors. On to... Um, Fixes for ringing. So you know what ringing is, especially around corners or on details when you're printing. You get uh, a quick vibration of your print head and then you get an overshoot and then it settles. Sometimes it's called ripple, etc., etc. So as far as some like simple or complicated solutions, I don't know if passive dampers are a thing that might help. I did mess around with that a little bit like shot dampers on the print head and things like that with varying degrees of success, but I don't know if anybody else has tried something like that or like a fluid dynamic damper, really just for the rebound off the overshoot, but that wouldn't really help the initial overshoot at all, so maybe that's not a great idea. Another thing I thought of is maybe, you know, counterweights on opposite sides of the belt. It's something I haven't tried yet. It's, it'd be really easy to rig up. Maybe I'll give that a whirl. But, I mean, that would probably exacerbate the belt you know, stretch and rebound issue, which brings me to the next one, better belts. 
if you've been with this channel for a while now, you know that I, I did a short review on the, um, the white belts with the, uh, the steel reinforcement, and it was a fairly unsuccessful because I was trying to get, like, regular uh, fiberglass, like aramid belts, nylon belts, silk belts, the steel belts, Teflon belts, and, and do, like, a shootout against each other. And that might help ringing significantly on machines with longer belts, like uh, Deltas and Core XY machines, because that's really the Achilles heel of, like, larger Core XYs. And it was really hard to get them, especially in, like, you know, GT2 and the widths and sizes that I wanted. So most of the stuff we have is, like, you know, uh, glass and fiber reinforced, like, butyl or whatever. Probably somebody has a patent for this nonsense, but I know there's, like, you know... Uh, four or five axis CNC machining and I know that's tied into a whole can of worms with like slicers and things like that but imagine instead of having to draw you know extrude stair steps for like you know a peaked roof or something like that do you're printing out or like a chess piece that it could just turn the print head sideways and you know print up like that on top of an already laid down support maybe like a finishing pass type thing uh, and speaking of finishing passes, would it be possible to do like a hybrid FDM SLA system where the, the FDM prints the main part and the SLA just like lays a thin layer of resin on the top that it cures on an already printed model just for a nice surface finish? Because SLA is cool, but I, the resin's nasty. It's toxic, not particularly biodegradable. And I try to t print everything in bioplastics that I possibly can. So maybe that's a way to cut down on that i don't even know if that's possible but just an idea maybe it'd be simpler to do something like you know an airbrush but with a hot end on the end those are two technologies that already exist or in the public domain so that might be easier and then uh, i thought about the um ringing that you have in a system and it should be fairly consistent across different speeds because you're not changing the mass of your head you're just changing the parameters so if you know what those are ahead of time you could compensate for that in the firmware possibly so maybe some kind of tracking mat that you put underneath and you have a little laser sensor on your head just to tune the printer that runs through a bunch of moves sees what the overshoot is tells the firmware and that compensates ahead of time not exactly a closed loop system that's more of like an open loop compensation but it seems, I don't know if that will be easier than implementing an, a closed loop, which brings me to closed loop systems. I'd like to see closed loop systems. I know um, Marlin has some stuff kind of built in-ish. I haven't tried any of it yet because I'm up to my earballs and nonsense. But uh, various types of closed loop error correction will be nice. Especially moving on to like 32-bit stuff where you have like built-in quadrature pins where, uh, you know, quadrature optical sensor pins on some of these and counters that aren't going to mess with your interrupts and things like that. And if the problem is that we're running everything off of a central MCU, make it easier to have satellite MCUs. This is a, a one big thing that I like to see uh, worked on more, which is like CAN bus support. And that's a bunch of like individual nodes that can transmit back and forth. They're not like a master slave type deal, like I squared two or uh, I squared C serial and SPI and that type of thing. It would be nice if instead of running off of one big central CPU that you're worried about blocking operations and using up your interrupts and, and uh, the t screwing with your timing of your pulses and things like that, if you could just have that handled by small MCUs around there. I mean, you know, the little STM chips are less than a dollar. There's no reason you can't have one on each axis just to spit out the steps and take info in from an optical sensor and then communicate that back and forth with the central MCU. But CAN bus would probably be the best way to do that. Uh, so that's something about like closed loop uh, feedback correction. Let's talk about like feed forward correction, which like closed loop can correct problems on the fly, but it's kind of like swatting a fly with a hammer if you always consistently know that your particular system is going to overshoot or underrun by x amount or something like that then you just have um, a pre-rolled compensated lookup table and you add or subtract or multiply your commands by the already known error value at that particular operating point and you've corrected the problem so an example of that would be if like if you knew that you were going to 
start under extruding at like x amount and it's like a very shallow exponential curve like let's say once you get over like 70 millimeters a second for your system it starts under extruding by x amount or something like that you've already tested that and know that you have to add like however many ticks to that and speaking of extrusion let's talk about extruders a little bit now i know a lot of us out there we grab regular old standard hot ends and then maybe modify them how we want with you know like i have volcano blocks on all of mine and that type of thing whenever you're doing something work with say like what's what's the easiest thing to manufacture you know uh quickly and cheaply and repeatably with what we have out of the materials that are popular and that sort of thing and you always have to make compromises i'm pretty sure that the heat sinks on those are made out of 6061 t6 aluminum which has extremely low thermal conductivity but it's good enough especially with the heat sinks being as large as they are on those obviously if you move to different grades of aluminum like 6063 6060 or even go down to like 1000 series which i know is kind of mushy and bad to machine but, but i would rather see one made out of copper which is two and a half times a better heat conductor than 6061 t6 aluminum but it's also three times heavier so you know what make it three times smaller because I want a smaller one anyway. This is right in the forefront of my mind because I am actually designing a printer right now, another one, and trying to decide what hot end to use. And I'm like, ah, oh, I can use an E3D with a volcano, but like it's gonna eat like 40 unnecessary millimeters of Z height with that big old heat sink and the big dumb groove mount that I hate anyway. I actually might, for that printer I'm working on, take a bandsaw and cut the two edges of the E3D flat tap some holes through it so I can side mount it, but we'll see how that goes. And moving on to cooling, here's one thing that I've been wanting to try that I actually bought a bunch of stuff to do a long time ago and just haven't gotten a chance to get around to doing it, uh, below ambient temperature air cooling. So if you've worked with like CNC machines before, you've probably seen the air jets that hook up to a compressor and blow very cold air on the parts. We don't have anything that extreme, so I want to mess around and see if you could rig up something like out of a, you know, aquarium pump and a Pepsi bottle and some tubing and get some below ambient cooling going on. It might seem like overkill, but if we're printing with big honking nozzles at higher speeds, we're having to heat up that filament a whole lot and then cool it down really quickly. So it's just something I wanted to mess around with. And speaking of heating up quickly and cooling down quickly, I would really love to see inductively heated hot ends as opposed to having just like the ceramic thermal cartridge indirectly heating like a block of aluminum or copper that then indirectly heats a brass or steel nozzle. You can ditch the heat block altogether, put an inductive coil around just the nozzle itself and use inductive heating. You have less thermal mass, so you can actually change your temperature on the fly and it should heat up a lot quicker, use a lot less energy, it's a lot lighter etc 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 these are all desirable things it's just a matter of getting it done and if it were done and you could tie that into the firmware that'd be even better because i found particularly when we get like more elaborate configurations in our firmware to do other things that uh some of the features that would track that in the actual hardware are lacking for example a lot of the slicers these days have variable layer heights and they can already print like variable widths and things like that depending on like if you're bridging or if you're doing infill or the inner wall or the outer wall that sort of thing so with the variable layer heights like you know with a volcano nozzle or something like that you might be printing details at like 0.2 something and then you might be printing just the big flat parts at like 0.5 and if you've tried something that extreme, you know that uh, it, you have to kind of like shoot in the middle for your extrusion parameters and compensation for flow rate and things like that and temperature because you get under extrusion when you're printing like bigger layers and faster or at least uneven extrusion between that and the smaller layers. So it would be nice to be able to tie in an inductive hot end that can quickly change and cool, cool and uh, heat up its temperature to vary along with those layer heights to try to even out the extrusion. And if you've printed a like, you know, a vase with details on the side in variable layer height mode, you know, if you're printing it with something like PLA, when you heat it up beyond a certain level, it starts looking shiny. And that's cool for like, you know, putting little patterns and details on things. It's not cool when you want something to have little nooks and crannies, but you want it to be all one consistent color because every time it goes down to the smaller layer heights, you're cooking that filament more and it's ending up shiny. 
you might be able to kind of simulate the same thing with regular old ceramic heater cartridges, but you would need a larger hot end heater and you would probably counterintuitively put a fan on the uh, aluminum hot end block, but I don't know how quickly that would respond. Probably not. Or hooking in, you know, two ceramic heaters, one auxiliary just to heat it up after you've had to cool it down to do the different layer heights, things like that just to give you better control over the hot end as opposed to it just being one temperature through the whole freaking thing, no matter what it is you're trying to do, because we know with flow mechanics, temperature is really important, especially with like a non-Newtonian bizarre viscous fluid like liquefied filament. So that's all. That's a bunch of wacky ideas. If you have any thoughts or if you've done any work on this type of stuff, leave me a comment in the uh, comments or if you know somebody that's worked on this, or if you have a better idea that might be simpler, or if you know why any of those ideas just won't work like right out of hand, go ahead and leave the reasons why down there. So anyway, thanks for watching. As always, my support links are in the video description below. I'll be trying to get something up pretty soon, as soon as all my dumb CAD work is done. So until the next video, get out there and make something awesome.